In this next unit, in our, and in our next big lab, we want to take a closer look at situations which involve objects that are accelerating. To investigate what causes, to investigate acceleration, we want to look at what things might affect the acceleration of an object. When we think about some situations, we want to reduce the acceleration involved, and in other situations, we want to increase the acceleration involved. If we can figure out what affects the acceleration of an object, we could do one of those two things. A situation which involves where we want to reduce acceleration would be a head-on collision uh, in a football situation where one person tackles another person. The acceleration that uh, a player experiences is related to whether or not they're going to experience a concussion or brain injury due to that impact. And so if you're an engineer designing football helmet, you want to figure out uh, what can we do that would reduce the acceleration involved during that impact. On the other hand, if you're an engineer designing a car or a race car or a muscle car, you want to maximize the acceleration, uh, be able to reach top speed in a shorter amount of time. And if you can figure out what things affect acceleration, then you can do that better. To look at and think about what things affect the acceleration of an object, we're going to look at a video um, of a water rocket car. This car is not much bigger than a long go-kart, and that center silver tank in the middle just has a whole lot of pressurized water which gets released out of the back and as that water gets pushed out of the back it pushes that car forward. The stuff coming out of the back of the car which looks like smoke is just water vapor. So let's think about what things affect the acceleration of that water rocket car that we just saw in the video. Uh, to do that, let's answer, see if we can answer this question. Uh, what, are, what could you change about the car so that it would have a larger acceleration? If you were an engineer and you could make some design decisions or changes, what could we modify that would allow the car to have an even greater acceleration than it already does? Let's first look at the force diagram involved, and then we'll talk about what we could change. We know that gravity pulls down on the car straight down towards the Earth, so we have a force of gravity. We have the normal force of the ground pushing back up. Because the water is being pushed out to the left, the water is pushing uh, and forcing the car forward, so there's a force of push to the right, and there's a frictional force back to the left. We know that the frictional force is smaller because the car is accelerating to the right, so the pushing force has to be larger. So now let's look back at what things would cause the car to have a larger acceleration. Here are a few common ideas. Uh, you could make the car out of lighter materials. You could make the body more aerodynamic so it's more sleek as it moves through the air. Uh, you might add more pressure in the tank or we could use lower friction tires. Well, if we look at the, the first thing, make the car out of lighter materials, what you're really doing is you're just decreasing the mass of the car. Whether we make a carbon fiber frame or we use aluminum for the frame instead of steel. To make the body more aerodynamic, what that affects is just the force of friction. If the air is able to flow around it easier, it's not colliding as much with the air molecules around it and so what we're doing is we're reducing the force of friction and if we reduce the frictional force we would expect the acceleration to get larger. If we add more pressure to the water inside that tank what we're really doing in terms of forces is increasing that pushing force and if we use low friction tires uh, we're reducing the frictional force in another way between the tires and the road rather than the body of the car and the air. So it looks like when we look at numbers 1 through 4, uh, there's three things that we could do to affect the acceleration or give it a larger acceleration. We could decrease the mass, we could decrease the frictional force, or we could increase the pushing force. Now I want to show you that those actually boil down to just two separate things. Let's look at the sum of the forces on this car. We know that the force of gravity and the normal force have to be the same size and balance each other out or cancel each other out because the car is just accelerating horizontally. 
So the only two forces then involved in the sum of the forces would be the pushing force plus the frictional force. Because the frictional force is pointed the opposite way, the value for the sum of the forces would be the amount of the pushing force minus any frictional forces felt, whether that's frictional forces from the air or frictional forces from the road. So let's look at what happens. When you increase the pushing force, then the sum of the forces gets bigger. Or if we reduce the frictional force, if force of friction gets smaller and the pushing force stays the same size, that also has the effect of increasing the total value of the sum of the forces. So if we either increase the pushing force or decrease the frictional force, it has the same effect in each case the sum of the forces in the car gets larger. So we can say that either of those two effects has the same outcome, that the sum of the forces gets larger. So it looks like all of these different situations and more that we could think of boils down to just two things that affect, affect the acceleration of an object, the size of the sum of the forces and the mass of that object.